Now it's time to talk about the hyperbola as a conic section. Starting with the definition. The definition of a hyperbola is the set of all points P in a plane such that the differences between the distances from P to two fixed points is a given constant. Now using the same vocabulary we used with ellipses, we're gonna call that distance from a point on the hyperbola to a focus, a focal radii, of which there are two. There's PF1 and PF2. And the distance between these two focal radii have a difference that's constant. So if I take PF1 and subtract off PF2, I'm always going to get a constant. Now, another point of interest in a hyperbola is the center. The center, like the center for an ellipse, is the midpoint of the line segment joining the two foci. Now let's take this definition and construct a hyperbola. Once again, I'm going to use Geometer Sketchpad, and you'll see up here I have the two focal radii, and here I have the difference between the two focal radii, and right now it's, uh, it's negative 3.16, and let's see, when I animate this point, uh, watch what happens uh, to the trace of the point on the hyperbola, and make sure you notice what's happening with this value up here, the difference of the focal radii. And so as I animate, you can see the hyperbola being drawn in and how it's drawn in. It's kind of weird. So as you watch the hyperbola being drawn, you'll notice that this difference, this 3.16, is swapping between positive and negative. So when it's generating points on this half of the hyperbola, the difference is negative, And over here, it's positive. So now let's use this definition of a hyperbola and write the equation for said hyperbola by definition. And by now you should know that the by definition way of writing the equation is the time consuming way. So here's our example. Find the equation for a hyperbola with the given foci and difference of the focal radii being in this case four. So I have the foci at negative four and four and the difference of my focal radii is four. So when finding the equation for a hyperbola by definition, there's a little bit of trickiness because you're looking at a difference. What you have to realize is that you're really finding the absolute value of the differences being four, or if you get rid of the absolute value, what you're really doing is you're finding the difference being both a positive four and a negative four. So technically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to use the definition using the positive four and the definition using the negative four. And so you're supposed to do twice as much work deriving the formula, but there's a way around it. And the way around it is to use this plus or minus when you're deriving the formula. And I'm gonna show you how. Uh, and it actually in the long run, it doesn't matter because the signs all cancel out anyway, um, because you're gonna be doing multiple squarings. So by definition and using the distance formula, I get x plus 4 squared plus y minus 0 squared minus the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals the plus or minus 4. All right, and remember from the ellipse, we didn't like squaring it when it was in this form we want to actually move one of the radicals over to the other side. Now I can square both sides to get rid of this radical and I get x plus 4 quantity squared plus y squared equals, now remember this is a binomial, well, technically it's two binomials with that plus or minus, that when I square it I'm going to get a trinomial. And so my first term is going to be x minus 4 squared plus y squared. And then I get plus or minus, because remember this is really two, eight square roots of x minus four squared plus y squared, and now a plus 16. And so I need to simplify this further, and I can see some things cancel immediately, like the y squareds. And if I were to expand these out, I see that the x squareds and the 16s are gone. And if I move this negative 8x over, I'm going to get 16x, so those are gone. I could subtract off that 16, 
and be left with plus or minus 8 square roots of x minus 4 squared plus y squared. So I need to get rid of this square, but I see that I can divide by 8 to make all of my numbers a little bit nicer. So I get 2x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y squared. And now when I do the second squaring, this is when that whole plus or minus madness uh, goes away entirely. Um, that double squaring takes care of any positive negative issues that I have. So when I square this side and I square that side, I'm going to get 4x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals x minus 4 quantity squared plus y squared. And so like I had to with the ellipse, I need to simplify this. And through the magic of algebra, So this is the simplified version of the quadratic relation that happens to be the hyperbola. You will notice that the y squared is negative in this case. If one of the quadratic terms, either the x squared or the y squared, is negative, that means you have a hyperbola. Now, like the ellipse, if I took the simplified version of the equation and go ahead and divide by the constant, in this case, I'm going to get x squared over 4 minus y squared over 12 equals 1. And like the ellipse, this 4 and this 12 have to do with the features of the hyperbola. And let's see how. Now when we talk about graphing hyperbolas, these are the four things you have to look at. Uh, first you have to find intercepts, like you always do for graphs. And now we're going to look at extent and end behavior. And these two are the important part of a hyperbola. Extent meaning the limits. And for a hyperbola, it's kind of like the opposite of the extent for an ellipse. Because if we remember the ellipse, there was this rectangle I could draw, and the ellipse had to live inside the rectangle. Now for the hyperbola, there's going to be a strip, either vertically or horizontally, where the graph is undefined. And that's the space in between the two halves of the hyperbola. End behavior, as we learned with rational functions, means asymptotes. So I have to find out the asymptotes of the hyperbola. The asymptotes are going to intersect at the center of the hyperbola. They have opposite slopes, and they will intersect at the center of the hyperbola, meaning at the midpoint of the line segment containing those two foci. And then finally, we're going to use find some points, and we're going to use the symmetry of the hyperbola to find four times as many points as we mathematically calculate, just like you could for the ellipse. Now, I'm not actually going to graph a hyperbola. I really want to talk about um, these steps, though. So let's look at how we would graph the hyperbola that we found the equation for by definition, the x squared over 4 minus y squared over 12 equals 1. And like the ellipse, this 4 and this 12 are going to be critical to the graph. And we'll see how as we analyze what this graph is going to look like. Now, the thing about the hyperbolas that are centered at the origin, they're going to have either an x-intercept or a y-intercept, but not both. If I shift the hyperbola around, of course, that can change. But as long as the center's in the origin, I'm only going to have either an x or a y-intercept. And so if I substitute an x equals 0, I get y squared equals negative 12, which means there is no y-intercept. So that graph is never going to hit the y-axis. Now when I substitute in y equals 0 for x, I get x equals plus or minus 2. So those are my x-intercepts at plus or minus 2. And when the graph is centered at the origin, the intercepts are super important. They're going to tell us basically the extent. Now there are two ways to find the limits or the extent of the graph. And what I'm showing you here is the long way. Because the actual equation written in the other format, the one that's equal to 1, will give you the extents if you know what you're looking for. What you really need to do is you take each variable one at a time and you solve for it. So in this case, I've solved for y, 
And to find the extent, your job is to determine the possible values of x that you can use. So it's like finding the domain when you solve for y equals. And in this case, I can simplify it down to just looking at the radical x squared minus 4. So I need to think about what values of x I can or can't have here. That's what's going to tell me what's excluded. Now, in terms of the hyperbola, I don't think about what values I can have. I have to think about the values that I can't have because that's what's going to be limited. So I need to think about what values of x I can't have. And in this case, I can't have values of x that are between negative 2 and 2 because that's what's going to generate negative number underneath the radical. Now luckily, when I do this analysis for the other variable for a hyperbola, I'm going to find that there is no limit on the other var variable. So as soon as I find that, say, the x is limited, then I know the y won't be, or vice versa. Now n behavior you know as asymptotes, and of course hyperbolas have asymptotes. And what I do to find an asymptote for a hyperbola is always going to be the same. I think about what's going to happen to the graph as x becomes infinitely large. So what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the equation that I use to find the extent of the graph. In this case, it's going to be the y equals. And you always look for the y equals because the asymptotes are going to be lines, and we know equations are of the form y equals. So you're going to analyze the y equals equation. And so I imagine... What happens to x as x becomes infinitely large? And that minus 4 in the long run is totally irrelevant. So what happens is, is I get this square root of x squared in the long run is just going to behave like x. And what I get is y equals root 3 times x. And that's my asymptote. And I have two versions. I have the positive version and the negative version. And these numbers here, the asymptotes, are actually found in the equation, not in the simplified version, but in that special equals 1 version. Plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 2 root 3 actually comes from that special form of the equation, the equal to 1 version of the equation. So now let's uh, try to put all that information together into something that we can use for hyperbolas. So I'm starting with the hyperbola that has its foci oriented horizontally. And I have a center at 0, 0, foci, negative c0, and c0, and some given difference of the focal radii 2a. And if my foci are oriented horizontally, then my hyperbola is going to begin with x squared and then I subtract off y squared. My difference of my focal radii 2a, I have it, square it, that's what goes underneath the x. And what goes underneath the y is this thing that we're calling b squared. Now, like the ellipse, there's a relationship between the distance from the center to the focus, the difference of the focal radii, and this, cons this b here, and in this case, it's b squared equals c squared minus a squared. And why we need this b? Well, this b is going to tell us the other component of the asymptote. And the asymptote in this case is y equals plus or minus b over a x. And you might get confused as to which one you put on the numerator and which one you put on the denominator. Well, remember this asymptote here, this asymptote, this b over a in the asymptote is a slope of a line. And we define slope as the change in y over the change in x. So you'll notice that underneath the y is the b, and underneath the x is the a. Now if I change the orientation of my hyperbola so that the foci are vertically aligned, the only thing that changes other than the location of the focus, you'll notice, is that the y and x swapped. The a and the b stayed where they were. It's just the y and the x swapped. The b squared equals c squared minus a squared is exactly the same. And you look at the slope of the asymptote, it's still the change in y over the change in the x. And you may think that the slope changes too, but if you remember the asymptote slope as being the change in y over the change in x, then you're going to get the asymptote right every time.